What's up everyone, Sean from ARTV. It's time for another top 10 countdown right here on the main channel. Today, I am gonna be doing one that I know you guys are excited for. I had a lot of people telling me, yes, please do this whenever I talked about it in my humans review, my top 10 favorite Gorillaz songs. Now, side note, Disclaimer, whatever you want to call it, I'm really not that big of a Gorillaz fan. They're kind of hit and miss for me, which I know, blasphemy, but surprise, surprise, everybody has different opinions, and they have such a wide range of styles. It's no surprise to me at all that I have a lot of songs that I love and a lot of songs that I'm just kind of meh on or just simply do not like, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's people that love Gorillaz, there's people that hate them, and then there's people in between like me, but I do have some songs that I love. I want to talk about those today, so obviously, as with any top 10 that you're ever going to watch, this list is biased towards the songs that I love the most. So with that being said, let's go ahead and kick off the countdown. Be sure to leave a like on the video today. Check the description if you want to see my honorable mentions and consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to keep seeing videos like this. They do take a lot of work and they are a lot of time, but they're also very rewarding because I love the reception that they get from you guys. I paid up for seven. Up first, we have Revolving Doors from the album The Fall. This was released on Christmas Day 2010. Why do I know that? Because my old roommate, I think, skipped Christmas that year. He was that big of a fan. It was for the fan club only. It actually dropped a few months later for everybody else in the world, but obviously it made its way online. I had the album, I checked it out, and I wasn't that big of a fan of it at the time. And not that I am now, but it's something that's great for just kind of like cruising at night. I've done that a couple of times, especially getting ready for for this top 10 list and that sort of thing. It's a very enjoyable record and this one has always stood out to me because I love the mix of just the guitar and the synths here. Very 80s and the synthesizers as they start to kind of chip away at this track, just backing and aiding. I like the vocals on it too. And primarily the fall was made on an iPad. Damon Auburn is sitting there with his iPad making beats, making sounds, making loops, and he actually came up with something that's really, really addicting here. My number nine pick is a fascinating listen. It's something that really touches on the topic of rap music being in its final stages potentially. And obviously this came out in 2005 on Demon Days at the time featuring Doom, now known as MF Doom. I believe he's had a couple of other aliases as a rapper over time, but he comes through with a very, very fascinating verse here. He's talking about rappers and the way that they're just not real like they used to be and how the music is changing. And the hook dives into that even further with 2D, AKA Auburn singing here about all of these things like it's changing the tides are changing what's going to come next is it going to fade away you know november has come december being next is it gonna fade away and obviously 10 years later actually like 12 years later at this point it's interesting to see how rap has kind of taken over and started to dominate rather than fading away people thought that crunk would be like the end of rap and instead it's continued to thrive in fact everybody seems to be influenced by it these days and then you've got a lot of shit you've got a lot of crap rap out here these days and it does flood the airwaves it can be, get a bit tedious but obviously humans the gorilla's last album did feature a lot of the good in rap so it's nice to see both sides of it and obviously to go back to this one where we get a really cool acoustic guitar loop kind of making up the beat there's a couple of sporadic things that work their way in and just shape up this track and it's really just kind of you know you, you vibe with it it's not like super dancey or anything like that but it's just a vibe oh my life you might have to dry a few tears on Busted in Blue, a pick from their most recent album, Humans. This song is the only one that did not have a feature, even though there are backing vocals from Kalela. I do enjoy that aspect as it goes on. Oh my, it's going in the background, trust me, it's there. I know it's not always the prominent part of the song, but they add a lot to it, it does shape it up. But like I said, the only track on Humans that didn't have a feature on it. But this one sees 2D just kind of reflecting. And like I said in my review of Humans, I could see 
see myself listening to this song after like a summer rain or as rain is like slowly falling down at night or maybe just kind of driving around in the rain pondering life and it's sad it makes you feel sad and disconnected because it's talking about like technology taking over and all of these other things and how lonely and trapped you can feel as a result of that I'm caught again in the mystery you're by my side The first thing I noticed about To Binge is that it almost feels like a waltz, like I should be doing a dance to this. It's got a vintage flair, like 50s, 60s, 70s even, meets modern, and I love the fact that Little Dragon is on this. I know, Little Dragon, first time ever saying that name in an ARTV video. This is such a pretty song, and actually in a way, oddly reminds me of Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. I don't know why I get that vibe from it, but it's classical, meets a few other vintage moments, like I said. And here, it's talking about alcoholism and just a relationship that seemed to be crumbling, falling apart, and it's like they're dancing around the issues, but at the end, it's like, you know, I still care about you, I still love you, even though I don't actually say it as often as I should. This is just a, such a moment here that comes together and it feels like something is getting fixed, like we're accomplishing something with this song. It's really unlike anything else that the Gorillas or really Damon in general have ever done, and I think that's why it caught my attention so much and why I love it. Never did no harm, never did no harm to put Dare by the Gorillas at number six on my top 10 countdown. Sean Ryder features on this one alongside band member Noodle taking the vocals here. Obviously that's not Damon Auburn doing the voice, it's somebody that they have that does the voice acting for Noodle and actually the singing here obviously as well. And I always was drawn to this one. It was one of the first Gorillaz songs that I ever got into. They were playing it on alternative stations, which was odd at the time because it, it didn't really have guitars in it. It was driven by this kind of synthesized beat, kind of four on the floor feel. I feel like you weren't really getting that on alternative radio at all, really electronics for the most part, maybe a synth here and there in the background of some of these tunes. But this one is just really driven by the synth, some keys and some repetitive loops and vocals and that sort of thing, but it's catchy as hell. It's like the gorillas were like doing the whole DJing thing before it was even cool. At the time of this song's release, the singer Daily Dolly, am I pronouncing that right, was not exactly known. He wasn't on the map, but Damon had seen him, was interested in his voice and his style, and was like, hey, we're doing Plastic Beach Deluxe Edition. This was like 2010, maybe early 2011. And then that never came to fruition, but they actually still released it as a single, apparently scrapping rhinestone eyes for whatever reason. That just seems like a tragedy to me. And instead, you know, instead of putting out that music video, which got scrap we only got the storyboard for it we got Don Comatic and it's something that was based off of the first ever drum machine that was made in the 1960s. I know a lot of people are thinking, God, he's such a noob whenever it comes to gorillas. And like I said, I'm not a hardcore fan by any means. This one is super accessible. It is very, very poppy. It's smooth, fun. It's got a looping beat. Obviously, once again, Damon probably did this on his iPad, but it's a ton of fun. The vocals are so good. I love the hook on this thing. It's impossible not to sing along. When we're all played out, played out. It's just, it's impossible. Like I said, you have to sing along. I'm 
really starting to get into PopCon's music and voice as a result of all these people featuring him, like Drake, Jamie XX, and obviously here, Damon Albarn with the newest Gorillaz album. Saturn Bars was really the lead single from this thing. It got the cool as hell 360 virtual music video, which I just, I love, and obviously the meme, the bath, they're the bath, or however you want to say it, was born from that. Thanks, Murdoch. It's more than just a meme, it's a song too, I promise. I love this, and I love the Jamaican artist and how he comes through here, talking about his rough upbringing and exactly where he is now, kind of the success story, and also what goes on there and what people have to do in order to survive. Some people even turning to like having to be a killer, for example. He calls out another Jamaican artist for that. He talks about his crew, he comes in, lays down some really, really smooth stuff. This is just such a vibe heavy tune. It's something that has a deep groove. I love the buzzing bass and synth, and especially in the background once 2D teams up on the vocals. I love whenever he takes over, and I do wish that he was a little bit more in the forefront all throughout this record, but still, it shapes up Saturn bars to be fantastic. Number three is unlike anything else you will hear. The song is so addicting. You want to come back and be mesmerized by it again. It's like you're drawn to the shiny rhinestone eyes. Rhinestone eyes, something that looks good but maybe is fake, like diamond eyes. Instead, you get the rhinestone, something that's like a cheap offshoot. And really, this song seems to be talking about something that I talked about recently with System of a Down, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, and it being disrupted by everything that we're doing. And it's all over this infectious, four on the floor, kind of danceable feel, especially once that hook rolls in where they sample their own B-side song, Electro Shock, something that never saw the light of day, but they sampled it anyways. And I love that, the way that the vocals get chopped in to the backing chorus of this one, and the way that those like big rhythms really start to swell as the song goes on. If I could take the crown of rum and a cola, does she stand in drama? She know I call her. She kidding on the sign of that she order. Imagine me. Banger, 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 banger. She's my caller. And Damon Auburn somehow did this again on his iPad. And it's one of my favorite Gorilla songs. Seriously, this was very close to taking away the number one spot. And maybe years down the road, that could happen. But as for right now, I just don't foresee that happening. But it's such a good song song it's impossible to deny like damon auburn's like almost like spitting bars over this thing it's the very hip-hop heavy just moving shaking bass and beat on this one and i love how fast paced it is but he seems so calm behind the mic here and it comes through with a song that maybe is about loneliness at its core but at the same time it almost like swells with confidence it's like it's flowing out of him but maybe he's overcompensating for the fact that he is super super lonely basically talking about you know oh you know i got her number I don't think I'll call her she's my caller the way that it plays off that maybe like he's chained to something there's a lot of interesting metaphors that go all throughout here but this song is impossible not to just get up and move your ass to I cannot go without mentioning how great the Kali Uchis feature is here I love that she gets her own verse and this is how the features on human should have been done more often I love the fact that Damon controls the song she comes in for her own verse adds a ton to it a lot of personality and flair and then back to Damon and the beat You can put your telescopes away. I know you saw this one coming from a mile away. So what? I'm a basic bitch. Feel Good Inc. is my favorite Gorillaz song. Sue me. Okay, hear me out. Hear me out. How can I not love this song? Okay, yeah, it's their biggest one. Maybe it's the most predictable choice here, but... But that bass groove and the guitars and the vocals and the rap feature from De La Soul, come on. Those guys coming in for a feature? Yes. How can we say no to that? How can we say no to that awesome godlike bass groove from Murdoch, which is 
Ironic, considering he's a Satanist, whoops. How can we say no to the multi-part structure of the song, the acoustic guitars, and then the more bass-heavy stuff that changes it back over to a hip-hop pacing? Everything about this song is gold, and you know what? I'm not even here to defend the fact that I ha I shouldn't even have to defend the fact that this is my number one. This is my favorite Gorilla song, and it probably is gonna stay that way for a long time. It's been there since 2005. That wraps up my top 10 Gorillas countdown. Keep in mind, these were all just my choices, guys, and like I said, this is coming from a casual fan that thinks they're kind of hit and miss, so obviously let me know your list in the comment section down below. There's no definitive list, but I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Be sure to leave a like on the video, and like I said, if you're able to, help me out on Patreon. It's that top link in the description down below, or else the annotation on the outro card in just a second. There's that link for you in the corner. If you'd like to see my humans review, click right here, or another recent review I did on the channel, you can click right here. All of my social media is found in the description down below. Let me know other top tens that you'd like to see me do, and other than that, I'll see you very soon right here on ARTV.